Again, we'll offer confession after Mass around 2.15 if somebody uh, wants to avail themselves of it. We do have 20 days after and before for confession. And uh, make sure that at some point you venerate the image of Divine Mercy, Jesus the Divine Mercy today. If you want that exceptional grace, that beautiful grace that Jesus offers to us. Um, oh, let's... Good afternoon. Welcome to St. Joseph Chapel and the Shrine of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. We are glad you are here to worship in this sacred liturgy. Please silence or turn off all electronic devices to respect the dignity of Holy Mass. Again, please remember to silence or turn off your electronic devices. The schedule for the rest of the day is on the flyers. If you don't have one, at 2.15 is Exposition and Confessions, 2 o'clock, 2.20, is another talk by Jim. And three o'clock, the hour of mercy will be the chaplet of divine mercy and Eucharistic benediction. We rely solely on donations. If you need to make out a check, please do so to Terra Sancta Ministries. During the Easter season, we pray the Regina Chaley instead of the Angelus. It can be found in the back inside cover of your blue gather hymnal. We will sing the first two verses in Latin, then drop to the bottom of the page to recite the rest in English. Thank you. Please stand. Regina Celi Laetare Alleluia Quia Que Menuisti Portare Alleluia Resurrexit Sicutixit Alleluia Ora pro nobis Deum. Alleluia. Rejoice and be glad, O Virgin Mary. Alleluia. Let us pray. O God, who gave joy to the world through the resurrection of thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, grant, we beseech thee, that through the intercession of the Virgin Mary, our His Mother, we may obtain the joys of everlasting life through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. The opening hymn is number 644, There's a Wideness in God's Mercy, number 644, verses 1 through 3. There's a wideness in God's mercy Like the wideness of the sea There's a kindness in God's justice which is more than liberty. There is plentiful redemption in the blood that has been shed. There is joy for all the members in the sorrows of the head. For the love of God is broader than the measures of a mind, and the heart of the eternal is most wonderful. 
If our love were but more sinful, we should rest upon God's word, and our lives would be thanksgiving for the goodness of our Lord. Troubled souls, why will you scatter like a crowd of frightened sheep? Foolish hearts, why will you wander from a love so true and deep. There is welcome for the sinner, and more grace is for the good. There is mercy with the Savior, there is healing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with Happy, Easter. Happy Easter. In the church's tradition, the eight days of Easter are one day, and it's always Alleluia. Jesus is risen, and today, through St. Thomas, the doubting apostle, he shows us his wounds of healing, that we may find healing in our souls, in our lives. Brothers and sisters, let us now acknowledge our sins as we prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you died on Good Friday to destroy death. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you rose on Easter Sunday to restore us to eternal life. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will ascend to your Father to forever intercede for us. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth. Of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father. Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy. of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand, the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast 
Kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles and they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response is Alleluia for the responsorial psalm. Alleluia. Alleluia. Let the his house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. Alleluia. I was hard pressed and was falling, but the Lord helped me. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my Savior. The joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. Alleluia. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Alleluia. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one, one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we say, God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood. Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. You believe in me, Thomas, because you have seen me, says the Lord. Blessed are those who have not seen me, but still believe. 
Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, and although the doors were locked, stood in their midst and, and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour. O Mary, conceive without sin. Pray. Oh, I love it. Nothing like forgetting a homily. <laughs> like Thomas, I'm not there. <laughs> I think we're all, um, we've all seen at one time or another a do not touch sign, like fresh paint. Our rectory's being painted inside. And, um, you know, whatever it is, um, that at times there are things that should not be touched. Um, there's actually a saint from Gaza who, you know, Gaza's in the news a lot, unfortunately, for what's happening. And his name was St. Vitalis. Um, and I read about this in uh, our Sunday Visitor where they had the saints of, um, I think, Divine Mercy. And what he would do at the cost of his reputation is um, visit prostitutes, pay them not to touch him. So he could have the evening to talk to them about God's love and mercy for them, and that he had better plans in store for them than they clearly had for themselves. And at his funeral, though, a lot of the Christian community, um, you know, kind of, oh, like, gosh, what a compromised, I, I don't know if he was a priest. He was one of those early um, Christian, let's say, church fathers, you know, from, let's say, fourth century. I don't recall if he was ordained, but while some thought ill of him, um, like Jesus said, the tax, not so much the tax collectors, but the prostitutes came for his funeral. He had reconciled them to Jesus and spoke to them of his mercy. And in the end, uh, Jesus knows the truth. And so here today, Jesus is really a big do touch me sign to Thomas because through his conversion from an unbeliever to a believer, who recognizes this is not a mere man, but God himself, 
we have a strength in faith through the healed unbelief of Thomas. The first revelation of Jesus' sacred heart was, of course, on Calvary. And um, one or two women here have said, I think they're here, who said when they dusted our crucifix, um, the, the wounds seemed shinier and brighter and redder. You know, um, maybe, maybe not, you know, in terms of a phenomena but, or a supernatural indication. But we know that the beloved disciple who was there at the foot of the cross with Mary observing the pierced heart of Jesus was also the one who put his head on Jesus' chest and in a kind of taste of paradise heard the heartbeats of the divine Savior. Kind of in contrast to Judas who symbolized the unfaithful priests who are selling out the Savior, in his case, for just a bunch of money. 30 coins. My gosh, what is that all about? And so John, although he fled in the Garden of Gethsemane, he came back and escorted Our Lady and Mary Magdalene all the way to the foot of the cross. So he is called the evangelist of our Lord's heart. From the very beginning, Christians adored and loved the human nature of Jesus, and especially with a particular regard for the wounds that penetrated to the core of his being. Do you remember in the garden where he said, my heart is sorrowful even unto death? He beheld every soul that he with the Father and the Spirit created. Because every soul is created uniquely and out of nothing. No human being can create anything out of just total nothingness. And he wept over those who would not come to him for salvation. Obstinate, unrepentant sinners. Maybe we've been a bit that way at times, or at least at moments. You know, when you get offended, you don't exactly feel like wanting to uh, reconcile with the person who hurt you. It maybe takes an hour or a day or a week, you know, to get back to kind of normal. But Thomas is kind of our model for coming through the wounds of Jesus to the healing and wholeness he has in store for all of us that ultimately will happen at the resurrection of our bodies when our souls are reunited with them at the second coming. And the flow of water that came from our Lord's side, like the apparition or the appearance of Jesus as St. Faustina, is a messianic sign. The springs of living water that we get through baptism make us a new creation. So when you dip into that holy water font, even though you've been baptized, don't do it by rote. But think, am I living my baptism? Renouncing Satan, the lure of sin. And let's face it, he's pretty good at making sin look glamorous, attractive, appealing. And following the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even unto death, if need be. Even unto death. Or even unto social marginalization that is happening more and more today. Uh, even in the state of Michigan, things are happening with TV uh, stations and purging people who are traditional, you know, traditional values, which are Christian values. However, the Lord will never be overcome. The disciples to Emmaus, we heard just, what, a couple days ago uh, in the gospel, and um, Thomas, they had given up hope. But Jesus is always there to come back, even when it seems like the devil has won, as he seems to be winning now, and he will bring his victory of salvation. Jesus comes to all of us for, with mercy, and we all need it. We're all sinners. Sometimes there may be moments in your life where you feel you're the greatest sinner, and that's actually a grace. There have been a few times offering Mass where I'm, I'm like, Lord, I should not be holding your holy body. I should not be saying the words of consecration to make you present on the altar. Um, but he, you know... He calls us priests who are sinners, you know, before we're priests, and he has to use somebody. And we're not conceived immaculate like the Blessed Mother, so we're all sinners, right? And, and that's how he comes to us. He comes through sinners for sinners to give us his holy body, not for angels, but for the children of Adam. And so we are blessed to believe in Jesus, even though we've not seen him like Thomas, though we do see him in the Eucharist when it becomes really present. So in this Easter season, these eight days are one day. And eight, you know, the very symbol of it is like eternity because it never ends, you know, the curves. They always keep circling around. 
And then we have an octave of eight Sundays until Pentecost. So the season of Easter itself is like eternal. It's kind of cool. You know, the early Christians figured it out, but it was all Jesus' plan that he's preparing us for eternity. Life on earth is a preparation for eternity. That's all it is. And so we've got to love as much as we can. Forgive as quickly. Don't let forgiveness be slow. You know, don't hold on to that grudge or let grudges grow. Okay, that's the devil working because the Savior heals us through his wounds and the devil hurts us through wounds. Don't let him do it. Nip it in the bud and go to confession. Reconcile with that person. As Jesus said, leave your gift at the altar before Mass and try to make up with the person if you can. And so Divine Mercy Sunday is really a new beginning for us great sinners to experience the mercy of Jesus. The greater the sinner, the greater the right he has to my mercy, he told St. Faustina. I love that line. It's in the diary number 723. The greater the sinner, the greater the right he has to my mercy. When I visited Poland for the first time last year, um, there were a lot of places I really liked. Um, and I visited Auschwitz. And, but one story that really caught my attention, I think kind of after Auschwitz, but I, I don't remember exactly when I came across the story, but I believe it was after, um, was the first commandant of Auschwitz. And he was a Catholic. He was a Catholic. Born in 1900, Rudolf Hess, or Hess, I'm not sure how we pronounce it. And a, he was born in a devout Catholic family with strict parents. He wanted to become a priest. But his father died, and he renounced his Catholic faith at, in the 1920s. So he was a 20-year-old something. And he joined the Nazi party, one of the first members. So notice, the death of his father, that father wound, undealt with, led him to a horrific membership instead of either becoming a priest or at least staying Catholic. Pain that is not transformed is transmitted. And boy, did he transmit pain in the future, as I'll share with you. In 1940, after proving himself in Dachau, which was the largest, you could say, Catholic seminary, because in Dachau there were many priests, and I think religious, among the other inmates there who were tortured. And so he proved himself there and was named the first commandant of Auschwitz. And he was put in charge by Himmler, Himmler Heinrich Himmler, to put uh, into action the final solution. And he did it in a more efficient way by introducing lethal poison Zyklon B that would kill as many, gas as many people to death as 2,000 in an hour. And the, the bodies, of course, kept piling up. I don't know if he was responsible for the, I think it was ultimately two million who died. There are how many, but hundreds of thousands has had to be. Hundreds of thousands of deaths, at least. And the weird thing is, in that kind of split ethical consciousness, he lived with his family just yards from the Auschwitz crematorium, kissing his wife, you know, good night, and tucking his five children into bed. Talk about a compartmentalized split person, not split personality, but you can kill people here and then have a normal family life or so it seems here. Again, like a lot of Catholic politicians pushing abortion and stuff. They just like, where are you? And that's how the devil, because of the undealt with father wound, probably. And I'm not a psychologist. I don't know enough about his life, but certainly part of that. He never touched the side and the heart of Jesus like Thomas did in a spiritual way. He never came to the body of Christ. He renounced that. Um, and block 11 was St. Maximilian Kolbe and others, you know, uh, and kind of just uh, away. And when I was there, I saw what um, the one person Gallo, where he was hung on. I'll come to that in a moment. Now, um, during this time, the Jesuits living in Krakow were sent to Auschwitz, like many others. But their superior, uh, Vladislav Lone, was absent. So the head of the house was doing something else. I don't know why he was absent. But when he came back and discovered what had happened, he snuck into Auschwitz to find his Jesuit brothers. Can you believe that? The guards, of course, figured it out or discovered him, and they took him to Hess, and Hess was so impressed, he released him. He released him. 
He was so impressed by his courage to uh, sneak into a, a death camp. Um, now, Hess was eventually arrested and brought to the Nuremberg Military Tribunal and, of course, sentenced to death. He never appealed for leniency. But in the Polish prisons, I quote, I experienced for the first time what human kindness is. Despite all that has happened, I have experienced humane treatment, which I could have never have expected and which has deeply shamed me. He further says, I have inflicted terrible wounds on humanity. I have caused unspeakable suffering for the Polish people in particular. I am to pay for this with my life. May the Lord God forgive one day what I have done. Now add to this, listen to the dates or the time of year, the church year. On Good Friday, April 4th, 1947, awaiting execution, he asked to see a Catholic priest. The authorities had trouble finding a priest that spoke German. I think they had trouble finding a priest who spoke German and would hear his confession. For them, he was already a dead man, dead man walking, right? But hosts remembered the name of one priest who did, Father Vladislav Hohn, okay, the priest he released. And um, believe it or not, um, he was not only in Krakow, okay, uh, now remember they were arrested in uh, Warsaw, but he was at the Divine Mercy Shrine praying. He was at St. Faustina's Shrine praying. And, um, and so on Easter Thursday, okay, April 10th, three days before Divine Mercy Sunday, Father Lone heard his confession. The next day he received Holy Communion, and afterward he knelt in his cell and wept. Three days after Divine Mercy Sunday, on April 16th, he was hung on that one person uh, gallow that, you know, uh, where you hang people just for one person that I was able to see. I think it was the original. And he, he died right outside the gas chambers he helped build in Auschwitz. And the official report of his death is he remained completely calm right up to the end and expressed no final wishes. But he did say when he came back to his faith in Jesus and his Catholic faith, it was a hard struggle, but I have again found my faith in my God. Again, the greater the sinner, the greater he has a right to my mercy. Um, you know, none of us will, I'm pretty sure none of us will reach even half that level, of course. But sometimes we do give up on ourselves and even on others and think that person is unconvertible. You know, they can't be converted by mercy, by grace. As an Easter people, we believe in the power of Jesus. And he alone is the Savior. There are no others. And he is ready to forgive us at a moment's notice. If there's a crevice of desire for mercy, he's in there. That's why in our gospel today, he's instituting the sacrament of penance. Regularly going to confession at least four times a year, okay, at least, if you can. It keeps our hearts tender and more sensitive to sin, and it keeps God more real. We don't, and also, um, I think it helps us realize we can keep coming to mercy even when we get really down on ourselves. You know, that same old sin we commit, those old habits, or we lose our, we lose our patience or something, and we just get really discouraged about our own spiritual progress. That is why our Lord is saying three times, peace be with you. It's reconciliation. It's being right with God that brings us peace. And being close to our Lord when we're reconciled with him, that we feel that peace, that shalom. We are no closer to Jesus, really, than in Holy Communion, even closer than Thomas was when he was touching Jesus' wounds. Thomas was ch touching wounds on the surface of our Lord's body. Maybe he pressed in a little bit, a, an inch, you know. But we have our Lord dwelling in the depths of our soul in Holy Communion. That's Emmanuel, God with us. He gets no closer than that. And so that divine touch, the moment the holy body of Christ touches our tongue, whether you receive in the hand or directly in the mouth, that's a healing service. That is the first and true healing service when the divine touch of our Lord's most sacred body touches the tongue of a sinner. 
may we confess before and after we receive our Lord, my Lord and my God. And then as Easter missionaries, not just keep the good news in our soul and in our hearts, but bring it out to the world. We have to influence who we can. Many people, even strong Christians, are vacillating because the devil is bearing down on our world. And he's going to purge anybody that follows our Lord. Some people may lose their jobs and are losing their jobs or will be pressured to do things they can't agree with. And you're going to have to have that relationship with Jesus, hopefully before that happens. So we want to be saying, my Lord and my God, and really following our Lord before we're put to the trial of fire. You know, because we don't know when those things, those things can crop up very unexpectedly. You know, you get a boss who doesn't agree with, um, uh, you know, with, with you, and they just find a convenient way to, show you the exit door. So brothers and sisters, as believers in the body of Christ in the Eucharist, we are kind of fundamentalists about it. We believe that it is true. Jesus was literal when he said, this is my body, this is my blood. It's his real physical flesh. And he wants us to come to him. We don't have to touch wounds um, like Thomas did because God is touching us with his body. You know, usually um, survivors of trauma who have been tortured are literally a a big do not touch sign because touching their wounds brings back the memories and can cause pain, especially if they're fresh. Not with Jesus. You might even ask yourself, how come the wounds were still there if his body was risen unto glory? It's to show us that it's the same Jesus and he is there to keep healing our wounds. He has them in heaven to keep healing us. And we all have those wounds. So today for Divine Mercy Sunday, um, if you haven't had confession, um, the exception for today for the exceptional grace is 20 days before or after this day you can go to confession. You do have to receive communion today, obviously in a state of grace. And the difference between the exceptional grace and the plenary indulgence is threefold. One, the 20-day difference versus um, a week before or after. Secondly, for a plenary indulgence, you have to be detached from sin. No attachment to sin. Now, I, I wasn't sure about all these conditions, so I called the shrine of uh, the Divine Mercy Shrine in Stockbridge, and a priest kindly returned my call, and he said, you know, um, it's almost impossible to determine if you're detached from sin, if you have no attachment. And I, I was just thinking to myself, well, you know, you do the best you can. You just try to say, basically, Lord, I'm not attached to any sin. I'm not wanting to do any sin as best I can figure out. But for the exceptional grace today, you don't have to soul search that. You don't have to have that condition. Now, I'm not saying uh, go and be attached to sin. <laughs> I'm simply saying you don't have to rack your soul and brain to figure it out. That's one of the parts of the exceptional grace. The other thing is a plenary indulgence While it removes temporal punishment, it doesn't remit all sin. The exceptional grace today does. It's a second baptism, but through the Eucharist, not the water of baptism. Wow, Jesus, thank you. Uh, If you're like, Father, it took you all these years to put that together, you're right. So one lady said, well, if it took you that long, uh, what about us poor lay people? That's why I'm telling you now. (laughs) It's an exceptional grace. I hope you all avail yourselves to it. Unlike a plenary indulgence, which could be maybe a fourth difference, I don't think you can apply this to a soul in purgatory. A plenary indulgence, you can. It's just for us. (laughs) Not a bad thing. That we're cleansed and made like a new baby in the spirit by a second baptism. Peace be with you. No, do it later. If you wish to follow along with the creed, it is on the inside front cover of your hymnals. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all this visible and invisible. 
I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Knowing that the Father's mercy triumphs over justice, we ask him to hear our prayers. That Christians may grow in a true faith in Jesus, resurrection, and his overflowing mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that the Mother of Mercy, Our Lady, beg God to pour out his mercy upon our country. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Jesus' mercy upon the Ukraine and for peace in the world through the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the many doubting Thomases who are away from the Catholic Assembly, who doubt or deny God, that faith and hope may enter their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That St. Joseph help us to show mercy in the many opportunities God offers us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For mercy to be upon all the dying, and may the perpetual light shine upon all the dead. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for peace in the Holy Land of Jesus, for peace, conversion, and knowing our Lord among Israelis and Palestinians. And we pray for our Palestinian Christians there. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Father, help us always witness to your Son and find healing in his name. Please hear these our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The Offertory Hymn is number 532. O oh, sons and daughters, number 532, verses 1 through 4. Number 532. Angel 
glad in what they see, who sat and spoke unto the three. Your Lord has gone to Galilee. Alleluia. them came their Lord most dear and said Mark I want to be over the carpet be on all brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all to loud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, Alan, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. 
celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ. Together with blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John, and Paul, Cosmas, and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you. Also, for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins, order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son 
may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also your servants who have gone before you with the sign of faith. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, though sinners, we hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him. O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, Informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Agnus Dei, qui toles peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui toles peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Jesus, bring eternal life to us who receive Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The first communion hymn is number 536, At the Lamb's High Feast we sing, number 536, verses 1 through 4. high feast we sing praise to our victorious king who has washed us in the tide flowing from his pierced side praise we him whose love divine Gives his sacred blood for wine, gives his body for the feast. Christ the victim, Christ the priest. Where the paschal blood is poured, death's dark angel sheathes his sword. Israel's host triumphant go through the wave that drowns the foe. Praise we Christ whose blood was shed, Paschal victim, Paschal bread, with sincerity and love. Eat we manna from above. Mighty victim from on high, Hell's fierce powers beneath you lie. You have conquered in the fight, You have brought us life and light. Now no more can death appall, now no more the grave enthrall. You have opened paradise, and in you your saints shall rise. Easter triumph, Easter joy, this alone can sin destroy. From sin's power, Lord, set us free, newborn souls in you to be. Father, who the crown shall give, Savior, by whose grace we live, Spirit, guide through all our days. Three in one, your name we praise. The second communion hymn is number 949, Alleluia, Sing to Jesus, number 949. Verses 1 through 4.
Hallelujah, sing to Jesus, his the scepter, his the throne. Alleluia, his the triumph, his the victory alone. Hark the songs of peaceful Zion, thunder like a mighty flood. Jesus, out of every nation, has redeemed us by his blood. Alleluia, not as orphans are we left in sorrow now. Alleluia, he is near us, faith believes nor questions how. Through the cloud from side received him when the forty days were o'er. Shall our hearts forget his promise? I am with you evermore. Alleluia, bread of angels, here on earth our food. Alleluia, hear the sinful flee to you from day to day. Intercessor, friend of sinners, earth's redeemer, plead for me. of all the sinless sweep across the crystal sea. Alleluia, King eternal, you the Lord of lords we own. Alleluia, born of Take a few moments of sacred silence to thank Jesus, Eucharistically indwelling in us to adore him. And pray for any of the Thomases, perhaps not in the assembly, who need graces and mercy. You may remain seated. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament 
may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We will continue um, until striving for the three o'clock hour, at which time we will have um, pray the chaplet. And um, uh, we'll also have veneration of the relic. And I think some more people need confession. So we'll, I think we can do them all in the front uh, main confessional. And um, Jim will speak again for us. And um, then at the three o'clock hour, we will um, have the chaplet and ask Jesus for a continued mercy, all of which flows from the Mass. It all flows from the Mass and the Holy Eucharist. A thank you to Father Joe Lang for joining us, uh, hearing confessions. He helps us so much. And also um, can celebrating Holy Mass. For Jim Miller, for his talks, his, the materials, he provides all of that on his own. It's just, he's an lay apostle of divine mercy, and uh, he gives that all to us and um, all his wisdom and pours out his heart, as Jesus did, to extend the mercy that comes from the heart of the Father and the Son, and especially um, on Calvary. I thank Mike Abishan for playing the organ for us today and leading us in uh, music and lifting our hearts up to the Lord. Um, I think I'm going to thank... Um, Brad LeBlanc for the uh, Chapel of Divine Mercy. Are you going to lead us in that or help us? So thank you ahead of time. And the Nettles, Kay and Lee, for um, uh, the flyers and the live streaming and the, uh, the relic that uh, Kay provides for us is St. Faustina. If you haven't had a chance to venerate it, uh, the relic of St. Faustina is right here. Um, we ask you not to touch it, but just spend some time in prayer there asking her to intercede for your intentions. And the flowers, I think, are on also um, a gift from uh, Kay's late mother, Teresa Wolski. So she's looking down, praying for us, and united in the communion of the saints. For all our wonderful volunteers who um, do so much behind the scenes to make this uh, possible. So we thank them. Coming on a Sunday, we're not normally open on a Sunday, but we ask permission from the diocese to be open on a Sunday. Hopefully, um, when Brother Louie and I move up, next door to the rectory in the summer. We'll have more masses, though um, we're not looking to be a parish, um, so not necessarily Sunday mass, but more um, liturgical offerings as well. Uh, looking down the road, um, we have evenings of reparation every third Monday, 7 p.m. Holy Hour and then mass. We open the doors at 6.30. Our country needs a lot of reparation because we're doing a lot of bad stuff and spreading all over the world. And then um, an evening for life, which is also Holy Hour and Mass every third Thursday. So if you uh, want to fight the, the battle against the culture of death, uh, you can join us again, same time, 7 p.m. Uh, Monday, so that's tomorrow, April 8th, the city of Pontiac is supposed to be closing a lot of the streets around here. And for redoing the streets and sewer systems. And so um, access is basically from Woodward back and forth to the shrine. We'll see what happens and if it actually begins tomorrow, but it looks like they're pretty much ready to start uh, by tomorrow. And it'll go into the fall. So we'll just have to be patient if you're someone who comes here for that. Uh, please stand. The Lord be with you. Please bow your heads and pray for God's blessing, answering amen to our three invocations. May Almighty God bless you through today's, solemn, today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks.
be to God, alleluia, alleluia. Saint Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The recessional hymn is number 532, O Sons and Daughters, number 532, verses 5 through 8. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. When Tom is first, the tidings heard. How they had seen the risen Lord, he doubted the disciples' word. Alleluia. 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 My wounded side, O Thomas, see. Behold my hands, my feet, said he, not faithless, but believing be. Alleluia. 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 Thomas then denied He saw the feet, the hands, the side You are my Lord and God, he cried Alleluia Alleluia, Alleluia Alleluia. How blessed are they who have not seen, and yet whose faith has constant been, for they eternal life shall win. Alleluia. Yeah, 
I've never, uh, I've never played before. If I turn the microphone on, is that better? <laughs> it's a humbling experience. <laughs> so Jesus has chosen us to be here today. He's invited us. And he's opened the doors of mercy for us. Jesus said, those who celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday, who honor the image of Divine Mercy, who receive Holy Communion, attend Holy Mass, and do deeds of mercy for others, who celebrate the Hour of Mercy, which we'll be doing in a minute, would receive complete, complete pardon of sin and punishment. Mamma mia, what a gift from Jesus. All, you know, we're like little children now. We're like little babies. Let's bow our heads a minute. Dear Jesus, we just consumed you in Holy Communion. We are physically digesting you in various parts of our body. Physically, mentally, spiritually, you are there. You're in our stomach. You're in our heart and our soul. We thank you, Lord for this gift of divine mercy that you've given us, this gift of holiness, this gift of peace, 
this gift of reconciliation, this gift of your body, blood, soul, and divinity, this gift of divine mercy. We thank you, dear Lord, now. And once again, as we did this morning, we open our hearts. And we lift from our hearts any doubt, any anger, any fear, any bad habits, any sinfulness, whether it be a, an addiction or a habit from impurity, from alcohol, drugs, from anger, from unforgiveness where we don't forgive a loved one. Enter into our hearts, dear Lord. We lift all of that and we take all of those difficult problems, we put them at the foot of your cross for the sake of your sorrowful passion. And now, dear Lord, with our heart and soul open, we invite you to give us your, your gift of complete forgiveness of sin and punishment. We pray especially for our loved ones who have gone before us, a mom, a dad, a sister, a brother, a husband, a wife, a child, brother or sister, a loved one. And we take their souls, dear Lord, the life that they've lived, in the gift of eternity, we place them at the foot of your cross. We ask to, release, to relieve their sin and punishment. If they are in purgatory, dear Lord, we ask you through your gift of divine mercy to lift them, to bring them to your heavenly bowl. Dear Lord, in this hour of mercy, you pass. You suffered, you died. But in our hearts, dear Lord, you live now and forevermore. We thank you for that through your gift of the Eucharist. And we ask you, Lord, today, where you lead me, I will follow. Where you lead me, I will follow. Where you lead me, I will follow. Follow, follow. talk and veneration of the relic.
confessions are continuing if you need to take part of our father here and fathers in the back of the church. At noon, darkness came over the earth. The whole land was covered with darkness that afternoon. And at three o'clock, our Lord expired. He cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lima sabbathadi. Jesus gave his body out in a loud cry and breathed his last breath. The three o'clock hour, Jesus told Faustina and you and I, that it is an hour of great grace, great mercy. And not just today on Mercy Sunday, Jesus asked us to pray the chapel of divine mercy and the novena of divine mercy unceasingly. So you can pray that any time, day or night. I was on Mission Catholic Radio one time with a program and a caller called in and the caller said, I understand that three o'clock in the morning is the devil's hour. Is that right? And I said, don't ever give any hour to the devil. Never mind, three o'clock. Jesus died in the hour of mercy, the three o'clock hour, the hour of great grace. And I find many times, I don't know about you, I wake up at three in the morning, 2.30. I can't sleep. The best way to get to sleep is start praying the rosary. I get about to the third decade of the rosary, okay? Over the body, and I start sleeping. I find the rosary is a beautiful sleeping pill. But at three o'clock in the morning, like three in the afternoon, honor Jesus. We saw there was a dark hour. The sun failed. A shadow fell over the earth and Jesus died. At three o'clock in roughly 20, 25 minutes, we'll be celebrating that with the chapel of divine mercy that Jesus gave us, with the rosary that Jesus gave us. Each of you have a booklet, okay? And turn for a moment, if you will, to that page that I, I wrote in, and it was page number, number six. And you can see where I, I, I took this booklet and Every time I give a talk, and I've given them in Ireland, Poland, Las Vegas, throughout New York, New England, Ohio, Indiana, and so on. And I try to give the people something to take home with them, besides some of my stories. <laughs> and it gives them an idea when they get home and they have a cup of tea. Maybe their husband or wife or a loved one couldn't make it. Maybe you want to copy this booklet, and if you do, okay. If you need extra booklets, we have them to bring to a loved one or a neighbor that couldn't be here today. So we look at them, and you can, read, and you can read silently along with me once again. The death of Jesus. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three o'clock in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, Lima Sabathani, Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last death. We find that in Matthew. So in our heart now, we've consumed God. In our body, we're digesting him literally. So as we digest Jesus in this half hour, before the three o'clock hour, okay, which I've said here, the three o'clock hour is the hour of great mercy, the hour of great grace. We realize that Jesus expired at 3 p.m. However, the three o'clock hour awful happens at 3 a.m. So if you awake, as I do, at the hour, savor it for Jesus. Anytime you wake up at night, I don't know about you, but sometimes I wake up and I get a thought or a prayer. If I don't get up and write that down, I forget it. The next one, I can't remember whatever it was, so I keep a little notebook by my bed and I just write down a couple of words to remind me how Jesus is speaking to me at night and he'll do that to you too. So if you're awake at that hour, savor it for Jesus. It too is an hour of mercy and our great grace. Jesus told Saint Faustina, 
at three o'clock and pour my mercy, especially for sinners, if only for a brief moment. Immerse yourself in my passion, particularly in my abandonment at the moment of agony. In the diary, Jesus told St. Faustina this, the worst pain that he had was in the Garden of Ang, the garden before he started his walk to Calvary. And he said in prayer to his heavenly father, he realized this, that people would be receiving him in holy communion and treat him like a dead object. When we go to Mass in communion, how many times do we say, oh, I gotta get out of here to Mass, I gotta beat the crowd. I gotta go take my car and go to the shopping center. I gotta run errands instead of staying till the end of the Mass and praying the final prayers of the Mass and adoring and thanking Jesus after Mass for the graces that he's given us during Mass. I remember one time I was doing a divine mercy presentation. I was really tired. Um, it had snowed, and I was um, at, up in Washington, Michigan, and um, I had been very busy all day. I did a radio show, etc. okay? And I went there because my friend Bishop Flores was there doing divine mercy presentation service. And I stayed after, but I saw a lady there that I recognized. I knew she wanted to talk to me. I tried to go down every other aisle to dodge her. I couldn't dodge her. <laughs> so she came up and she said, Jim, I knew you'd be here today. I was looking for you. I said, you are? She says, yeah, I wanted to see what happened. Do you remember my daughter who was at the Women's Correction Institute? I said, yes, I gave you Divine Mercy materials. And you said, at the, um, at the Macomb House of Corrections, they're praying the chapel every day there at three o'clock. She said, that's right. She said, and some of them are not uh, Catholic. And she said, sometimes the w women is there is going to have a baby, and they bless the mother and child. I said, that's beautiful. I said, thank you. She said, well, I want to thank you for doing that, but I knew you'd be here today. And I wanted to tell you this. My daughter was a, was a prisoner there. I said, I didn't know that. She said, I know. But she was released last week. Oh, I said, thank you, Jesus. But on the way home, she took an overdose and died. And I wanted to see you today to tell you that and ask you if you would pray with me. I was ashamed of myself. Sometimes when somebody's looking for us here at the chapel or at our church or at our neighborhood, don't duck them. Open your heart to them. People need you. Your face, your composition, you represent Jesus. Throughout your life, you know somebody one, two, three years from now who may come to you and may need a blessing of divine mercy. Don't be afraid. Don't be too tired. Hear them out. Where you lead me, I will follow. Where you lead me, I will follow. Where you lead me, I will follow. Follow, follow. In the back of the book, you'll find that on page seven, I say that we're embracing confession. I try to go twice a month. That's maybe a hundred times a year. I love going to confession. When I go, everything's off my mind. And I try now and then, which we can do, make a general confession. That doesn't mean you're gonna be in serious sin. Maybe I ask Jesus, forgive me for the sins not use. When I was a rascal, I was a wise guy. I used to go all the dances, you know. And so I ask God to forgive me for the sins of my youth. So when we go to confession, we can open ourselves up. If there's no serious sin, we can say, Dear Jesus, forgive me for the sins of my lifetime. And in particular, anyone that bothered you or any habit that's bothering you. On page 7, I've said this. On Mercy Sunday, the soul that will go to confession and receive Holy Communion shall obtain complete forgiveness of sins and punishment. On that day, the divine mercy floodgates through which graces flow are open. Heaven is open that day to you and me. So don't think it's not. Don't doubt it. The greatest thing that Jesus wants us to do through this, besides re repenting, is to trust in him. 
to trust in his design mercy. The basic requirement for good confession is to have the intention of returning to God, the prodigal son, and to acknowledge your sins with true sorrow. Mankind will not have peace until it turns to the font of my mercy, Jesus said. So with that in mind, remember, let's do it again. Let's all close our eyes again. I love when we pray together. I think it's the most important part of what we're doing during the day. Dear Jesus, we have our eyes closed. And we think now, dear Lord, of kneeling before you, bowing our head, maybe being there in the Garden of Olives with you when you were alone and the, past, and the apostles left you. So we join you, we join you now in the Garden. We have our head bowed and we open our heart. We pray an act of contrition. We ask you, dear Lord, to enter into our heart to teach us the true reason, the true meaning, the true reason of confession, of confessing ourselves to the priest, who is you, dear Lord, are there behind the priest, actually forgiving our sins. So, dear Lord, we bow our heads again. We ask you to lift from us any sinfulness, any bad habits, any difficulties that we might have, any marital problems, problems within the family. We ask you to take from us maybe any difficulties we're dealing with with finances, with cancer, with heart problems, with our health. Oh, dear Lord, we need you. We need you, dear Lord. We need your love and mercy. We need your forgiveness and healing. So with our head bowed, we come to you, dear Lord. And we take all those difficulties, all our struggles, and we bundle them, and we place them at the foot of your cross for the sake of your sorrowful passion. Now with our heart open again and clear, we ask you, dear Lord, humbly for the grace, for the forgiveness of all sin and punishment in our life. We ask for that forgiveness of sin and punishment with the gates of heaven open for all our loved ones and those who have gone before us. I offer it especially for my son who took his life many years ago, and who our iron run into many people who need your help, dear Lord, because of pain and suffering in their life. Help us, dear Lord, hear our prayer. Where you lead me, I will follow. Where you lead me, I will follow. Where you lead me, I will follow. Follow, follow. We love stories, and stories are so important. I've been in a, a ministry helping people in nursing homes for close to 40 years. And I was a food service director in a nursing home some years ago in Massachusetts. And I would do a holy hour every Friday with the residents. And it was Thanksgiving Day. And on Thanksgiving Day, I'd put a turkey in the lobby with all the fixings. So when the families came in, they could see that. And our residents knew it was their Thanksgiving. That the Meadow Green Nursing Center in Waltham was their home. So I would set that up for them. This one Thanksgiving, I was setting up the turkey, and I saw two ladies crying. And one of them said, can I help you? Is there something wrong? They said, yes. Mom is up in room 301. She's dying. I said, oh, I'm sorry. I said, would you like me to get my Bible and pray with her? I, she said, your Bible? I said, yes. I'm with Father McDonough's Healing Ministry. I'll get some holy water in my Bible and I'll bring it up. So I got to my car, got my holy water, and I went up to 311. And there in the room were nine members of her family. Her name was Mary Connors. And I said, um, we're gonna pray with Mary today. And I said, it's a difficult day for her. So I went up and I whispered in her ears and she had her eyes closed. I said, Mary, Jesus loves you. And today, we, your family, myself, 
We're going to bring you before Jesus today. We're going to pray for you. Is there anything you want to ask Jesus for? Mary struggled. She looked up and opened her eyes. She said, yes. I said, what is that, Mary? And she said, well, I brought my kids all up Catholic. They're very devout. And she said, I pray the rosary every day with Father McDonald on the radio. But she said, I never had time to be a Catholic. I said, what do you mean? She said, well, I promised my Joe when we got married, my husband, that I would bring the kids up Catholic. But I never had time to do it. Joe passed, and I continued to bring the kids up. Now I don't know what to do. I told Mary, do you love Jesus? She said, yes, I love Jesus. I said, would you like to be close to him? She said, yes. I said, would you like to be a member of the Catholic Church? She said, I would love that. I said, would you like to be baptized? She said, yes. I took my holy water and opened it up. I said, close your eyes, Mary. And I baptized Mary in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen, with holy water. And she opened her eyes. And she said, you mean I'm a Catholic? I said, yes. Remember this, if somebody is sick and dying, we as lay people, as members of the church, Christians, members of the Catholic Church, we can baptize an individual. I never baptized anybody before or since in my life, but Mary needed Jesus. She needed to be a member of the Roman Catholic Church. And I needed to be humble enough. It's humbling when you held, hold somebody's hand who's in their 90s and you're in your 50s and you're holding their hand and they're dying and you're blessing with them holy water. That's humbling. So I prayed with them, I talked with them, I sang with them. His peace is flowing like a river flowing out of you and me flowing out into the desert setting all the captives free so i sang to mary and she smiled and she thanked me and the people in the room thanked me well it was a year later i was at a christmas party and this man came up and gave me a hug i said pardon me sir I'm not like that. Maybe I look like that. I'm not like that. And he said, no, you don't understand. He said, a year ago, Thanksgiving Day, you baptized my mother. I said, yeah. He said, we had a priest see her. She received the sacraments. She received confession and communion. And she died on Christmas Eve. And there were 10 of us members at the nursing home by her side that year. Thank you. I didn't know that. You see, we don't know, humbly speaking, how we can help another person in need. And that's important. And that was um, Mary Connors was her name. I'll never forget that. And I love stories like that. For instance, I love going to, I don't know if you would know or not, a place in Detroit. I discovered it in 1980. It's called the St. Bonaventure Chapel the Salinas Casey Center, okay? Well, I told the story this morning of how I went to Ireland with my wife in 2005. My wife's from Ireland, a little Irish girl. She's a fine girl that she is. We're married 64 years, and the reason she's a good cook, I can tell, because I got it right here to prove it, okay? And the best thing she can make is her Irish bread. It's a fine thing. So anyway, we went to Ireland in 2005, and I told the story this morning um, I'll tell my friend, Ed Coyle, that um, a good storyteller can tell a story once or twice, maybe put a little thing on it. I'm a storyteller. On Mission Catholic Radio, I was there five years, and I would tell the stories. And I wrote a letter to Connell and Mida and asked for Vineyard, and they gave permission to do it. And I'd go to conferences, and I'd go to um, the um, boys' conference, the women's conference, the men's conference. And I would tell stories and pray with people. So what happened was, it was in April of 2006, and I said how we went to Ireland the night before, and how I was on the, the year before, and I was on the radio, and how 
once again, my uh, program announcer said a phone call, and it was my wife, and her, her mother was dying in Ireland. And I said, well, go visit her. She said, we have no money. We never do. <laughs> so I brought her the money, we went to Ireland, okay? And at the hospital, nobody recognized my, and I tell you, because some of you are new, some weren't here this morning. And we went to the hospital. They were in Banislaw. But on the way there, on the airplane, which is flying from Detroit to Boston, and Boston to Shannon in Ireland, in my heart, in my mind's eye, I established a prayer team, a healing team. And the head of that really healing team was Solanus Casey. And I prayed to uh, Father Solanus, I need your help. On that team, I had the Blessed Mother, St. Joseph, St. John the Baptist, and the angel, the people who appeared at Knock in Ireland in 1879. I put them on my healing team. But I put Solanus in charge, okay? Um, so there, um, I went and prayed. And my mother, once again, my mother-in-law, when, when we went to see her at the hospital, I prayed in the chapel at first, and I went to the hospital. And Kathleen, a beautiful Irish girl, 92 years old, she didn't recognize any of her daughters. Mary from England, no. Nolene from Castle Bar, no. My wife Bridget from America, no. And the, and the nurse was worried because she had been comatose for several days. But she says, do you know this man? And she lifted my St. Pendant across and she kissed it. And she said, yeah, that's Jimmy Miller from America. Well, my goodness, I said, um, how did she know that? That was Jesus. That was Solanus Casey. But on that day, she recovered somewhat. Enough so that three weeks later, on our way home from Ireland, she was um, taken to a nursing home. She lived for nine more years. We don't know what's going to happen, but we know that we have to pray. We have to organize our prayers and be humble about it. And with that in mind, I also told the story about how I prayed with Nolene and Pat. In 2005 and 2006, I went to their house to pray with them again. And how Nolene said, I told my husband Sunday that I was going to start drinking again. Their son had taken his life like my son, and she needed help. And she said to her husband, I wish that Yank was here to pray with me. And here it is, a year later, unannounced, the Yank knocks on her door and prays with her. He knows that, we don't know that, but she knew that. I got back to Detroit, and the first chance I had, I went to the Salinas Casey Center. And I'm praying there. I don't know if you how the center was at that time, but you go in, the chapel's on the left, and you can pray alone and quietly, so I did. And then you go out of the chapel and you pray before, the, the, before uh, Solanus, who's there in, in case. So I went and I started praying. And beside me came in a family. And the boy kept talking and screaming and talking and screaming. And I said, I couldn't pray much more, but I get up, I went over, okay? And I looked at the little boy, I think I got it here somewhere, wait just a minute, I go into my secret things. And I looked at the boy and I said to the mother, he was about maybe three years old, I gave him my rosary. I put my rosary in his hands and in her hands, and I clutched them together. The boy hadn't stopped crying in almost two years. He stopped crying. The mother looked at him, she looked at the rosary, she kissed her son, she kissed the rosary, and I walked out to where Solanus Casey is, and I said, my work's done here. <laughs> and I walked out, and I prayed before Solanus Casey. Pretty soon, a man came out and he said, that was my daughter, I'm the baby's grandfather. He hasn't stopped that in two years. Thank you, I said, don't thank me, thank Jesus. Thank Jesus for our healing. We are instruments if we allow him to use us to help others in need, and that's what I told him. 
Then the mother came out who was crying, holding her baby. I gave her my rosaries. Did you ever give a pair of rose beads away? What a gift. What a gift. So I gave her the rosary beads and left. And I just said to myself, where you lead me, I will follow. Where you lead me, I will follow. Where you lead me, I will follow. Follow, follow. So Jesus has led, left, has led us here today. The relic of St. Faustina, the image of divine mercy, Jesus in the Eucharist there before us. When you get a chance, come up and honor that. And then at 3 o'clock in a few minutes, we're going to sing the Chapel of Divine, Divine Mercy. We're going to honor the image of Divine Mercy in this hour of 3 o'clock. We're going to ask forgiveness in our heart. And we're going to request personally, talk to Jesus and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's all for now. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You expire, Jesus, but the source of life gushed forth for souls, and the ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world. O fount of life, unfathomable divine mercy, envelop the whole world and empty yourself out upon us. If you wish, you may kneel. O blood and water, which gush forth from the heart of Jesus, as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water, which gush forth from the heart of Jesus, as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water, which gush forth from the heart of Jesus, as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended to, to hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And I told for, for our sins, our sins and those of the whole for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. In atonement for our sins and those of the whole world, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. 
Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. In atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. In atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, 
our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, holy mighty one, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. <clears throat> Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the God, in whom mercy is endless, treasury, treasury of, of compassion, compassion inexhaustible, look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us, in us that, that in difficult moments we might not despair nor become despondent, but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. Amen. Amen. In the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll have benediction in a few moments.
Uh, we're passing out the laminated exposition benediction cards. Uh, we thank Brad LeBlanc for singing for us. He did a great job. Thank you. His daughter is a little better, but Brad is great. Uh, normally his daughter, is, she's really fantastic. It's no put down for Brad. He did, I could not sing that. Um, otherwise I would have tried, but I cannot lead it. Yeah. Um, we've had, uh, there's, there's always things going on. One of our volunteers, her husband, had to go to the hospital. So she's, um, we pray for Maria Kenny's husband. And um, there's always things going on. So um, thank you for hanging in there. And as soon as we have these cards, we'll do benediction. Anybody still need confession? Is there anyone? Okay, a couple. I'll get you after benediction. No, no, no worries. Okay, and thank you, Mike, for waiting. I thought you were gone, so we're <laughs> grateful you're still here. We'll do, um, uh, again, the tantum ergo for our um, benediction service. Everyone get the cards? Tantum ergo sacramentum Venere murcenui Et antiquum documentum Novo from heaven, alleluia, having in itself every sweetness, alleluia. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you have given us the Eucharist as a memorial of your suffering and death. May our worship of the sacrament of your body and blood Help us to experience the salvation you won for us and the peace of the kingdom where you live with the Father and Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen.
the divine praises, and we know the heart of Jesus is often offended by the misuse of his name and other offenses, so in reparation we do it um, together. Blessed be God, blessed be his holy name, blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man, blessed be the name of Jesus, blessed be his most sacred heart, blessed be his most precious blood, blessed be Jesus Christ in the most holy sacrament of the altar, blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Consoler, Blessed be the great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be God, Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. And may the heart of Jesus in the most blessed sacrament be praised, adored, and loved with grateful affection at every moment in all the tabernacles of the world, even to the end of time. And again, before our Eucharistic Savior, we thank all who made this day possible, named and many unnamed. We'll conclude with verses 1 and 3 of Holy God, we praise thy name. Holy God, we praise thy name. Lord of love, we bow before Thee. All on earth Thy scepter claim. All in heaven above adore Thee. Infinite Thy vast domain. Everlasting is thy reign, infinite thy vast domain. Everlasting is thy reign. Holy Father, Holy Son, Holy Spirit, three we name Thee, while in essence only one, undivided God we claim Thee, and adoring and the need while we own the mystery and adore.